Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Lori's Stories. Uh, my name is Lori. I work for the Children's Book Bank, which unfortunately is closed right now. Like lots of other things that I'm sure you miss, because I miss them too. Like school, and playgrounds, and libraries, and all that stuff. But while we're stuck inside and things are closed, I'm going to read you some stories that I have in my house. I'm very lucky to have them. Uh, today is a very special edition of Lori's Stories because it's Earth Day! I don't know if it's Earth Day for you right now because you could be watching this video anytime. But for me, it's Earth Day or it's Earth Week anyway. So we're going to celebrate Earth Day with a special story. Earth Day is a really great time to think about all the things that the planet does for us, how it keeps us alive and happy and healthy, and the ways that we can treat it better by, you know, recycling and not using single-use plastics like plastic bags and whatnot. And, you know, not taking wild animals home and keeping them in your room. That sounds funny, but don't do it. Don't do it. All right, we are going to do a very special story to me. I just love it a lot. It is called Tokyo Digs a Garden by John Eric Lepano and Kellen Hatanaka, both Canadian individuals, and it actually won a Governor General's Picture Book Award for being really great. So I'm not the only one who thinks it's great. Just saying. Yes, this is Tokyo Digs a Garden. Tokyo lived with his mother, his father, his grandfather, and a cat named Kevin in a small house that stood among tall buildings. Tokyo's grandfather had lived in the small house since he was a boy. He loved to tell stories about how things used to be. I bet you have a grandparent or an elder that does that too. Just want to show you a little closer. There's the little house in the big city. Back then, the house looked over hills and forests and meadows and streams. Deer grazed on the hills. Foxes ran through the forests. Birds sang in the meadows. Salmon leaped from the streams. I'm just going to show you. I love these pictures so much, so I'll try and give you a good close-up look. But now, all of that was gone. Tokyo's grandfather said the city had eaten it all up. Cities had to eat something, after all. One sunny spring afternoon, Tokyo and Kevin were playing on the doorstep when they heard the music of an ice cream truck. Kevin jumped quickly over the gate. Look at him go. Kevin loved ice cream. But when they got to the street, they saw that there was no ice cream truck at all. Just an old cart pulled by an old bicycle, pedaled by an even older woman. The cart was not full of ice cream. It was full of dirt. Kevin was very disappointed, as you can see. The old woman held out her hand. She was holding three seeds. Plant these seeds, said the old woman, and they will grow into whatever you wish. She dropped the seeds into Tokyo's hand and continued along the road. Tokyo shrugged, put the seeds into his pocket, and followed Kevin back to the house. Does that sound like a story that you know already, maybe? Got some sort of fairy tale vibes going on. At lunch, Tokyo put the seeds on the table. Grandfather looked at the seeds. Then he looked up at the small piece of sky peeking out between the tall buildings. Today is a good day for planting, he said. Tokyo gulped down his glass of water, pretending he was a city drinking up a deep, cold lake. There's a little piece of sky right there. Tokyo went into his backyard where nothing was growing, not even a weed. He looked at the ground and wondered where to plant the seeds. A little bug crawled slowly across the bricks before disappearing into a crack. Tokyo had an idea. He lifted a brick and underneath was cool, sandy soil. He made three holes with his finger, dropped one seed into each, and quietly made his wish. Then Tokyo covered the seeds with dirt. That night, Tokyo dreamed he was riding an old bicycle through the city. All of a sudden, he turned into a fox, and the buildings changed into tall, creaking pines. Kevin dreamed of ice cream. The next morning, Tokyo heard a bird singing. When he peeked out his window, he saw three small wildflowers sprouting up from the bricks in the middle of the yard. He ran to tell his grandfather. But when he got to the kitchen, grandfather was already staring out the window in disbelief. 
Nah, said Grandfather, shaking his head. I've never seen anything grow that fast. And Tokyo's garden kept growing. After breakfast, the bricks around the flowers were completely covered with soft, spongy moss. By dinner, three trees had grown, and the moss had become a meadow of wildflowers and shrubs. By the next morning, the garden had grown up and over the buildings, across the street, down the road, over the cars, and into the expressway. Well, that's going to cause a problem, isn't it? The day after that, huge trees towered over apartments. Their strong roots broke the pavement. Vines climbed skyscrapers. Water poured from hydrants, flooding the streets and turning them into rivers. You can see their little house still there. Whoop, that's a better angle, there you go. The day after that, the city was completely wild. Deer foraged in office lobbies. Rabbits burrowed under library carpets. Bison stampeded through traffic lights. Bears climbed telephone poles to search for honey, where bees had made their hives. That is a lot. Tokyo, Grandfather, and Kevin lay on their backs in the yard, which was now in the middle of a deep, dark forest. This garden is much too big, said Grandfather, shaking his head. The cars can't drive because the streets are full of jumping salmon. Your mother had to take the old rowboat to work today. And there was a sloth in the elevator at your father's office, so he had to take the stairs. What are we going to do? There's the sloth. I like the sloth. Tokyo thought for a moment. Kevin's tail twitched. A pack of monkeys swooped from branch to branch in the canopy above. I think, said Tokyo, that we'll just have to get used to it. Grandfather watched a flock of cranes flying across the small piece of sky peeking out between the trees. He remembered how, as a young boy, he would watch them flying overhead before winter settled in. I think maybe you're right, he said. Gardens have to grow somewhere after all. And that is the end of Tokyo Digs a Garden. I think one of my favorite things about that story is that the ending is not what you expect it to be, is it? If you wrote this ending, would it be different? I don't know. I think it's a perfectly lovely ending because it makes us think about how we treat the environment. Do you just bulldoze it because it's in your way or do you learn to live with it, learn to adapt? So yes, Tokyo Digs a Garden. It's by John Eric Lapano, Kellen Hatanaka. I know it is available on the Toronto Public Library website as an ebook. Um, if you don't have a library card, I believe with a mobile phone number, you can actually get a temporary one right now. So that is something to look into. Very exciting. They have oodles and oodles of ebooks, and this is one of them. So I hope you have a lovely Earth Day. I hope you do something in honor of Earth Day. Things that I can think of just from reading this book are if you have seeds, you could plant a seed in a cup. Watch it grow in your window. I always like doing that. And something very inspiring is Kellen Hatanaka's illustration work. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it's pretty much just cut out different shapes from construction paper. So maybe that's something you could try and make your own garden out of construction paper. Well, until next time, have a happy Earth Day. I really enjoyed uh, telling you a story today. So I'll see you next time. Uh, before next time, you can subscribe to our Children's Book Bank Canada YouTube page. Again, I don't know where the button is, but you can find the word subscribe. And then YouTube will let you know when we have new videos up, which we'll have pretty often. Until then, see you next time.